whenever you hear an algorithm, don't think, oh, it's some kind of scientific tool that God made. No, it is a non-scientific uh, opinion that whoever owns the algorithm has made, and they are in control, and they get to decide. If I want to build an algorithm as a data scientist, literally all I need is this historical data and a definition of success. And I need to be able to look in the historical data what led to success in the past. And then I will be predicting that the same thing or similar things will lead to success in the future. An example I like to give is um, cooking dinner for my family. I think about all the things that I've cooked in the past and what worked and what didn't work. And then when I cook the dinner, I decide whether it was successful. And this is where my definition of success becomes important. My definition is, did my kids eat vegetables? And this matters because, well, my 10-year-old son is addicted to Nutella, and he would define success as, did I get to eat Nutella? And the answer is probably not, because we're going with my definition of success, because I'm the one in power. It's not math, it's not objective. It is very dependent on the kind of data you use and the definition that is chosen. I like to give the example of Fox News because Roger Ailes, who founded Fox News 22 years ago, was kicked out because he was systematically discriminating against women. Imagine that we build an algorithm that looks for people who were successful at Fox News in order to predict that people like that will be successful at Fox News. And you apply it to a current pool of applicants trying to get a job. What you'll see is that qualified women, women who deserve the job, will be ignored. Why? Because women like that, people like that, were not successful in the past. In other words, if we build this algorithm from sort of a toxic culture um, history, it will embed all that toxicity into the algorithm. If we just trust it too much, if we trust it more than we used to trust humans, then we're letting it happen without any pushback. When I call an algorithm a WMD, a weapon of math destruction, what I mean is three things. First, it's an algorithm, a scoring system usually, that's being used for really important decisions for a lot of people. The second thing is that it's secret. Nobody shows you the formula, you can't get it if you wanted to. So that third characteristic, a weapon of math destruction, is that it's unfair. It's destructive to the individual. It's also destructive to society. Like, that increases inequality by making lucky people luckier and unlucky people unluckier. So one of the most problematic WMDs, weapons of math destruction, are called crime risk scores. They're predicting people getting arrested after leaving prison. And if you're high risk of returning to prison, the judge will sentence you to longer. I didn't actually commit another crime, but I'm being punished as if I had committed another crime already. The questions in the questionnaire are incredibly racist. So they ask questions like, are you on welfare? Did your father go to prison? Did you get suspended in high school? Do you grow up in a high crime neighborhood? It's shown that you're much more likely to get a high risk score if you're black. So they're in prison longer for no good reason. That happens twice as often to black men as to white men. The whole point of the crime risk scores was to try to have judges become less racist. Because judges are kind of famously racist, the idea was give them the scientific score and that will balance their racism. But the score itself is racist, so it doesn't help that problem. And moreover, because people sort of believe it's scientific, it makes it worse. I'm not claiming that the people that built the um, crime risk score were like toxic racists. The people who build these algorithms are data science nerds. They actually are not aware necessarily of the problematic nature of the data. The other problem though, of course, is that they actually don't really feel responsible ethically. I've talked to data scientists who build crime risk scores and I asked them, do you ever use race directly? And they said, oh, no, 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 I would never do that because that would be wrong. And then I said, well, do you ever use zip code? And they said, oh, yeah, sometimes I do because it makes it so much more accurate. But that's the same thing as race in a segregated society. And they know that, right? So I say, look, that's big, dude, that's a proxy for race. Does anybody there care about what you're using or not using? Do they give you rules? And then the guy said, no, 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 they just trust me because I have a PhD.
Algorithms seem to be a mechanism to avoid accountability for mistakes. And that's a very, very scary concept indeed. In general, though, I think the best way of thinking about it is we need democratic accountability. So we need to unite as a society and say, hey, algorithms that are really important need to be accountable. If somebody is being denied their human rights, their constitutional rights, their legal rights, there should be an appeal system, there should be explanation. The first step is to measure these algorithms for exactly these biases that we should acknowledge are probably in there.